Hello friends, welcome back. Today we're going to do a telephone number validator. Return true if the past string looks like a valid US phone number. The user may fill out the form field in any way they choose as long as it has the format of a valid US phone number. The following examples of valid formats for the US phone numbers. Uh, this is examples of valid formats. Uh, they've got parentheses, they've got dashes, they've got spaces, and it's all mixed up. But at the end of the day, it looks like there's four and then three and then three, which is six plus four is 10. There's either 11 numbers or 10 numbers. And if there's 11 numbers, the first number has to be one. So for this challenge, you will need, you will be presented with a string such as 800, like a valid phone number or a really invalid phone number, uh, 800 and then the, number, the word six. Um, followed by a bunch of other nonsense, and it, that should return false. Your job is to validate or reject the U.S. phone number based on any combination of the formats provided above. The value code is required. The area code is required. If, you, if the country code is provided, you must confirm that the country code is 1. Return true if the string is a valid U.S. phone number. Otherwise, return false. Otherwise, return false. That's where I'm going to start right now. Just looking at this, if we were to run the tests now, it looks like we would pass a lot of the tests, but not most of them. I'm just going to have a default of return false. If we default to returning false, we're going to pass most of the tests. And then what we can do is just break down. Like this one is a valid phone number. This one is a valid phone number. So we just need to write in ways that this can return true. So the first thing that I think that we could do is say, let's just take out the spaces and the dashes right so um, I'm gonna say um, let polished phone equal the string dot replace and then inside of the replace we're going to do a um, a uh, re re regular expression and inside of the regular expression we're gonna con include dashes and spaces and we're gonna replace those with empty so here I'm going to console.log, the polished phone. Okay, so here's what we're passing in. We see we've got two dashes in here, and we want it to just be the numbers of 555555555. Right now we're only getting one. Okay, cool. I forget that when we, we create a regular expression, we need to make it global. Right now we're just replacing the first one, so we want to make it global, so we replace all of them. So now we've got this. And then, um, yeah, so that, that's, that's good news. So let's say if the polished phone dot length is equal to, what do we have, uh, 6 and then 4 is 10, is equal to 10, then we can return true because it's, it's a true number. Um, and so here, yeah, this one would return true. And so that would pass the test for here. So now I'm just going to run the test again and see what's going on. Interesting, it didn't pass the test. Oh, this one passed the test, so now we're moving down to the next one. Here we have 1555. Now we want to have a second if statement that says if, it's, if the length is 11, so, and the first number is 1, then we want to return true. So else if the polished phone dot length is 11, and the polished phone at position 0 is equal to 1, then we want to return true. And now, I'm just going to pull this out so that it stays ele elevated. Um, so yeah, telephone check. I'm going to set this one equal to, well, yeah. I'm going to say let r equal this one, and then we're going to console.log result. Sorry, I'm going to do a result. Okay, cool. So we're running, rendering false here, which means we're doing something wrong. GTH. Still rendering false. So polished phone right here. And the polished phone at position zero. So let's console log polished phone at position zero. That's one, so that's right. And then the polished phone dot length is equal to 11 polish dot length so it's not but yet 
console.log. Here, I'm just console logging in here. Huh? <clears throat> so it's not actually entering here. The polished phone dot length is equal to 10. Else if the polished phone dot length is equal to 11. Polished phone dot length, it's equal to 11 right now. And then polished phone at position zero is equal to one. <coughs> hmm. Ah, I see what's going on. <clears throat> right now I'm passing the integer of one, but it's not the integer of one. It's the, uh, the, the variable. <coughs> this is a great example of seeing what's going on here. If you use the triple equals, um, the, the string of the digit one will turn out to be false. But if you use the double zeros, this, the, uh, even though this is passing in a string, JavaScript will convert this one into a string for you. But I think it's better to use the triple and then go um, put the one in parentheses. Cool. And so now what we're doing <clears throat> is we're saying, if the polished phone has a length of 11 and the first digit is one, then we return true. Otherwise, we return false. So now, um, we can get rid of this console log now uh, and then get rid of this space as well. What we're doing is returning true for this one, which means we're passing this test. So if we run the tests, looks like that one passes. Great. And uh, so now the next thing that we need to deal with is parentheses. So I'm seeing... Um, the parentheses here are causing us to return false because the polished phone... Well, yeah, actually, I'm just going to add this in here. So this is our test run, and then I'm putting it into our console log, setting the result equal to the results. And so telephone check, this run turns out to be false, and we're result, our result is false. Um, so now if I come down here, I can go console.log, the polished phone. And so this is why it's returning false, because as the polished phone is going into these if statements, it has these parentheses in them, which is not, um, it doesn't pass our, the length of this one becomes um, 12, right? To 10 plus one, two, or it becomes uh, 13. So, um, so it, it doesn't work. Um, so one, what's one thing that we could do? We could say if the, uh, well, I guess we could say um, if, let's say else if, no. We could just have something here that would deal with parentheses beforehand. So we could say if um, the polished phone dot uh, index of, and then we have the, this parenthesis. Um, oh, I'll just console log this now just so we can see what's going on. I'm going to get rid of this console log and just play this one. So this one, now that we have an index, so it's zero and then one because we're already replacing the, the space. So our position at one. And if that, <clears throat> if we have this one, so we could say, uh, yeah, so I'm saying if this polished index is at position one and the polished index of the closing bracket. No, if this index of the of the opening bracket is less than that of the closing bracket, then we can um, we can make the polished phone equal to the, and then we can just replace the string or the the polished phone. We can replace the uh, parentheses with. Uh, uh, no string. So here I can go. <clears throat> you need to put a forward slash before, or is it a backslash before the parenthesis, and and then a backslash before the parenthesis. Okay, cool. And so now if we <clears throat> console log here, the polished phone. What we're doing is we're just passing in this number. So we're saying if the this number this parenthesis is less if the position of this parenthesis is less than the position of this parenthesis then we replace the parentheses with 
no value. And uh, that will make it so that when we're feeding the polished phone number into here, we've cleaned the parentheses out if they are properly, or if this one is at a position less than that position of this one. And so let's run the tests and see what happens. Okay, looks like we're passing a lot of tests. Now we're failing one, two, three, four. We're failing four parentheses. Okay, so let's start with the top one. Okay, so it looks like what's happening is if there's one parenthesis, we want it to be failed. So I guess I should say, um, well, here we could just say, let's see. Well, we could just make a conditional statement that says if this, if the index of the second parenthesis is, uh, is greater than zero and the, there is, and the index of the, of the opening parenthesis is negative one, then we want to return false. And so we could do that up above before we even clean up the string. So we could say if string dot index of, and then we say a open parenthesis. So if this is equal to negative one and the string dot index of a closing parenthesis is greater than negative one, which means is it there, then we just want to return false. So that means <clears throat> what I'm saying is just return false if there is no opening parentheses, but there is a parenthesis. I hope that makes sense. Run the test, see what happens. Okay, it looks like that one passed. The weird thing about passing tests is as soon as you pass them, you kind of forget about them. So now here we have another situation that's kind of unique. If somebody were to pass in a number that was wrapped in parentheses. Now this one's returning true because it's less than this and greater than this. But um, it's actually a valid phone number too. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I almost think that this would work, but the tests say we don't want it to work, so we need to figure out a way to render this to be false. <clears throat> so, I mean, one thing that we could do is just say if string at position zero is equal to uh, opening parenthesis, uh, we could return false. But that's actually going to fail some other tests, I think. Yeah, that'll fail these tests because this is correct. Um, what could we do? We could say if the string, if, or if, okay, um, let's get the position of it, right? So string dot index of, if the index of the early parenthesis minus the string dot index of the closing parenthesis Right, so in this example, this is 0, 1, 2. 2 minus the po next posi the position of the closing one, which is 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 minus 6. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 2 minus 6 is 4. Hmm. Is equal to, is greater than 3. Two, three, four, five, six. It should be three. We want to return false. Return the test, see what happens. Should return false. Interesting, we're not returning false now. So let's see what's happening here. If I take this one, we were returning false before, but now we're... Oh, it, yeah, I, I had to change it. So this is returning true. Let's uh, console.log the string at index of this guy. So this should be zero, actually. Right? Oh, we need to switch these around. Okay, and so the, uh, the opening parenthesis and then the closing parenthesis, it's zero and 11. So we need to say 11 minus zero. Right now we're getting 0 minus 11, which is giving us negative 11. Uh, so string of the index here. So we're saying <clears throat> 11 minus 0 is greater than 3, then we return false. Okay, I just had those switched around. 
Cool. Let's uh, run the test and see what's happening now. Is greater than three. So zero, one. Okay. So what's happening now is I'm failing this test. Um, so I'm going to throw this number in here and I want to see what the, um, I want to just console log this to see what the distance between there is. Because I actually know that I want the distance between there to be uh, that. So if it's greater than three, but right here it's greater than four where it's correct. <clears throat> so we want to say if it's greater, if it's uh, greater than or equal to four, three, <clears throat> two. No, no, no. <clears throat> right now we're console logging the string into four. If it's greater than or equal to five. Okay, cool. So we want the distance between them to be greater than or equal to five. And we're run the test, see what happens then. Looks like we're still failing a test. Okay, looks like the only test we're failing <clears throat> is in the case where the user enters a negative, a minus sign at the beginning of the telephone number. And so I think that that's kind of easy to manage because we always want to have the first character not be a thing. So we can just say um, if uh, the string at position zero is equal to negative, we want to return false. Um, yeah, and for anybody who is doesn't like that single line stuff, I'll I'll just write it all out explicitly right now. Uh, just for we can refactor afterwards. Return false. Cool. Uh, I didn't even put this number in there, but I'm pretty confident that this is going to pass all the tests now. Yeah. <clears throat> now there's I'm probably a million ways to do this. This is really the sort of blunt force way I would say to do it. Just take the tests. Um, HTML. You know, HTML5 has, I'm just refactoring now while I talk, but HTML5 has a phone number um, validating, you know, built into its language. So you're actually never going to have to do something like this. It's better to use libraries probably to do this stuff anyways. Um, one thing I would note in this, I'm testing the string initially here. And whereas here, I'm starting to replace the digits in the phone number before I start making test. So it's important to have your order of operations be good here. Um, as I refactor code, I like to make it so it's all organized. Here I'm organizing it from the longest down to the uh, shortest. Uh, the polished string here. We don't need our console log in here now that we've completed the tests. And um, I think that this is everything that you need to know. Uh, if we were, you know, we run the p tests and they pass. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of different ways to do this. This seems kind of like a hacky way to do it personally to me. But like I said, uh, HTML5 has a telephone validator built into its forms. So you're never really going to have to do something like this. It's more about just going through the process of uh, thinking it. So I hope this video was helpful. And uh, thank you for watching. We'll see you in the next video.